What's going on guys, Roger here with QBO Tactical. In today's video, we are back to my favorite platform, the Double Stack 1911, or what some of us call the 2011. This is a gun that I've been looking at as a possible EDC gun, um, as it has a lot of my favorite features, such as a factory compensator, an optic cut, light rail, and a very nice out of the box trigger. Today guys, we're taking a look at the Bull Armory SAS-2 Ultralight Comp. Now, as always, I like to tell you guys how I go about getting these products in for review. Um, you all know that we have a good working relationship with the team over at Bull Armory. They reached out a couple months ago and asked us if we would like to try out the Ultralight Comp for a video. Being one of my favorite platforms, of course I said yes, and here we are. Bull Armory did send us this gun free of charge for this video and for future content. Now, a little later on in this video, guys, we will dive into the specs of the UL Comp, so stay tuned for that. But for right now, let's get into what you guys all came here to see, the range footage. Um, as always, we did record our first rounds through the gun, so here's that footage now. All right, guys, out here on the range to get our first rounds through the Bull Armory UL Comp. Uh, this is their 3.25 inch barrel with a comp on the end. Uh, very nice, small, compact concealment gun. You guys know I like ported stuff, so having that comp on there is awesome. Run some 124s, got the Holosun uh, EPS carry mounted up here. We'll talk about why this specific optic uh, later on in the video, but I'm just gonna shoot my first 10 rounds, uh, see how the gun feels, here we go. So I can feel that comp working and just bringing the gun right back down. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the hits here, but that first shot, like it went up and then boom, brought that dot right back into focus. Uh, let's go look at the hits. The first few shots that I kind of just, uh, which click banged, meaning I just reset the trigger, and felt it and heard it with this nice tight group here. And then when I sped it up, kept everything at alpha uh, at 10 yards. We still have to zero the optic. I just slayed it to the uh, irons to get a co-witness. Um, but yeah, uh, 124 is out of that thing for the initial shots. Uh, I'm liking it. I'm gonna have uh, Gil and Gabe and Landon hop up here, see what they think. sweet that comp really does help put it back into place i kind of like that especially for a three three inch nice let's look at the hits uh i have one charlie but i mean everything else is an alpha that felt pretty nice i like it For it being so compact, it was just able to stay on zero and it was easy to track the red dot on that. Man, I really like it. Looks like he kept everything in the uh, A zone. Nice. Oh shit. It's flat, man. Oh shit. As far as first shots go, that was definitely my best performance, and that was 100% that gun. The next thing we did was to get a proper 10 yard zero with the Hollow Sun EPS carry. All right, guys, getting a quick 10 yard zero uh, with the uh, Bull UL comp here. We get a lot of questions about the equipment we're using and everything like that. Uh, we have a video, I'll link it up here, uh, but we did a whole breakdown on how we zero our handgun red dots. So everything about uh, the distance, the equipment we use, how we do the math to calculate where the zero needs to be. So definitely check out that video. But for now, I'm just gonna get this thing zeroed at 10 yards with some 124s. All right, so our first six rounds, awesome. Nice tight grouping here is what you want to see. Uh, that's why we use the bench rest and all the things we do. We are using the Hollow Sun EPS carry. I'll talk about that later on in the video, go in the specs and everything. It's a closed emitter uh, optic that I prefer for my uh, compact handguns. Um, but yeah, six rounds right here in, I mean, that's a half inch grouping or one inch total right there. But let's see, going here up two inches. We need to go two inches up and then one inch left. I'll make my adjustments and then we'll see where we're at. All right, 
another nice tight six round group, but it looks like I went a little too high, a little too left. So I'll dial it back real quick, one uh, inch right, one inch down, and should be good to go. All right guys, so I shot the group a little faster. I'll probably redo it because I want to get a nice tight zero. Um, to me, getting a zero like this or like this with your optic, especially if you're going to have it as a carry gun, definitely uh, boosts my confidence in carrying that setup. That's what I want to see when I'm shooting it and zeroing. So I'll shoot this group again, um, but two rounds are touching here, so I might have, again, moved down uh, a little too much from there. All right, we're getting a little crowded over here, so I brought it down here. I mean, that's pretty dang awesome right there. I do have a few flyers here, so I'll reconfirm again over here just to be sure, but I'm liking it. Now, something I want to reiterate here, um, I don't know about you guys at home, but I feel much more confident in the gun that I choose to carry when I'm able to produce results like this. Being able to shoot tight six round groups with almost every single round touching is something I have come to expect in these higher end guns. When it came to getting a very nice zero, the UL Comp did a phenomenal job. Next up guys, we ran our favorite drill, the build drill. All right, guys, doing our build drills. I did forget my shooter global timer today, so unfortunately, we're gonna have to do it this way, but using my regular timer, shooting an A zone steel target out at seven yards. Uh, gonna film it this way, that way you guys can see and hear the hits. It's a mini A zone, so any hit is an A zone hit. If you don't hear a hit, then I missed. So here we go, stand by. Whoa. Had a bad grip, had to adjust. Got all my hits nice and clean though. 243 and split times are 17, 17, 14, two 14s and a 16. Let's go again. That felt good, nice and clean. 199, so 15, 15, 16, 15, 17, and a 16. Get one more in there. See if we can do a little better than 199. Here we go. Ah, I threw the second or third round over the head. It was 188, 14, 15, 15, 14. I'm gonna do, yeah, I got enough for one more. Here we go. Ah. Again, I threw the second round right over. I can see when I'm tracking the optic before it's coming all the way back down, I'm breaking the shot and went right over the right for a 193. So I did get one clean one for a 199 uh, sub two, and the other ones were 188 and 193 with missing one target or one shot. So seven yards out, A zone steal. I'm gonna have the guys hop up here, see what kind of times they're getting. That was a 2.69. for a 2.95. Didn't seat the mag for 4.5 one more time. One miss for a 2.53. One miss, 2.55, go again. Two, three, nine, attack reload. Again. Three, three, seven. Total time of two, three, nine. Going again. Two 
total time of 248. Going again. Shot wild on that one, missed really fast. Splits on that was gonna be one six, one six, one five. Yeah, sounded like it. Now, after getting some build drills in, I wanted to try out a failure drill. Uh, in my opinion, if you found yourself in a self-defense situation with a handgun, uh, two rounds to center mass of your threat may not be enough to stop that person, and this would most likely result in you needing to deliver a well-placed shot to the head. All right, guys, we're gonna run some failure drills now. Um, I'm liking how this gun conceals, how it feels on the waistband. We are running the QVO Wingman Appendix Rig. Uh, even with the extended mags, it's concealing well, um, not printing. Uh, in addition to that, I'm liking how compact it is and how well it's shooting. I really dig those really tight groups that we were getting when we were zeroing. Um, so, defensive shooting, you can find yourself having to do a failure drill, which is two to the chest, guy, suspect, whatever, the, the assailant is not stopping, and then you have to put one in the head box to get them to stop attacking you. So we're gonna see how uh, accurately and how fast we can do this. Here we go. Stand by. Two alpha, one bravo in the head box for a 220. Let's go again. Two alpha, one bravo again for a 198. That's sub two. Let's see if we can get it all clean, all alpha. Nope, shot three alpha center mass. Here we go for 234. There we go, two alpha, and then one alpha head box for a 214. What oh, I got left, I got enough. Let's go again. My dot was super high and I just broke into the Charlie for a 192. Two oh nine. I'll take that one. Let's go look at the hits. So everything for the body was alpha, except for this guy that went Charlie. And then I only got two in your. This would be your ocular cavity, the alpha head box. But I'll still take these in the uh, nose and mouth. I'm gonna have the other guys hop up here. See what kind of times they're getting. Two alpha and one bravo for a uh, 3.06. One alpha, one Charlie in the chest, and one alpha in the head for a uh, 3.28. That is two alpha and one alpha in the head for a 2.79. Let's go look at them. There is my one Charlie right here, and then my Bravo that first round, and then those two Alphas, everything else is Alpha. Looks like two Alpha, a box, two, three, four, eight. Go again. Three oh nine. Go again. Two eight three. So, so I got two alphas right here in the same hole. Alpha, one Charlie, one Bravo, and two alpha alpha. Time of 2.45. Time of 1.96. Proud of that one. I hope they're all hits. Whoa. We'll go one more time and clean it up.
with the reload. Total time of 529. Let's check out the hits. So this was the second to last run. That was honestly me shooting past my skill set, throwing those shots way off paper. This is what the gun's doing. All alphas and then all pretty much headshots on the gun's part. This is just shooter error. But other than that, the gun's tracking really good, man. Now, since the Bull Armory Ultralight Comp features a factory compensator at the end of the barrel, um, I did want to shoot this gun while recording in super slow motion with our high-speed camera. So we shot three different grains of 9mm ammunition while recording at 1,000 frames per second. Um, for those of you familiar with the channel, you know that we always do this with compensated or ported guns. However, this time we got a very surprising result. Now after I shot the slow motion footage, I honestly did not notice a significant difference in muzzle rise or felt recoil between the three different grains of 9mm ammunition. Um, they all felt very similar to me with very little recoil. Side by side, one after the other, it did feel like the 147s were a little snappier to me, but it was very slight. Um, this is usually the opposite when I shoot ported guns. So I decided to have the guys hop up on the line and have them shoot the three different grains of 9mm ammunition and then give their thoughts. So three, three, and three. Three, three, three. That was interesting. It was almost like the 147s had a little bit more um, kick this time, yeah. Yeah, push to them. But very slight, dude. I didn't notice. I didn't notice the difference when I shot the slow mo. Yeah, but the 115 still. I mean, 124. Sorry, still felt the best. The one that we've been shooting all day today. Yeah, that is weird. It's like a very subtle difference. Like, I wouldn't notice unless I shot them side by side. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to tell either. I mean, in my opinion, I didn't, I didn't really much feel much of a difference in any of them. They all kind of felt the same to me. Now, before we finished up on the range, I did want to get Landon, Gabe, and Gil's final thoughts on the Bull Armor UL comp. All right, Landon, Bull Armory UL Comp 3.25 inch. What do you think? Uh, so this is a really cool shoot for me, man. This gun shot super good for how lightweight it is. Um, it stacks right up there with the C2. Maybe shoots even better than the C2, in my opinion. That comp's been reliable with every grain weight we've tried today. And, uh, dude, the gun's just awesome. I have nothing bad to say about it. All right, Gabe, final thoughts. So final thoughts, um, it did take me a minute to get used to that grip angle because I'm still a Glock shooter like I am. Um, but overall, I did like this gun. It shot very flat. That comp really put in a lot of work, especially for it being a more very compact gun. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. I'm, I, I thought it shot pretty well. What do you think, Gil? My opinion is for it being super compact, shot super flat. If I had the money, I would definitely buy this and switch over for my Glock. Now guys, I'll be sure to give you my final thoughts at the end of this video, but first let's dive into the specs of this compact setup from Bull Armory. 
The SAS-2 Ultralight Comp from Bull Armory is a double-stacked, hammer-fired, semi-automatic pistol chambered in 9mm. It features a 3.25-inch fluted barrel with a single-port compensator at the end. It has an aluminum frame with a full-length Picatinny rail. It utilizes black polymer grips with a mild texturing. The slide is made from stainless steel and features front and rear cocking serrations, as well as a Holosun K footprint for optics. The trigger comes in at just under 3 pounds, and the gun features a 16-round magazine. I chose to go with the Holosun EPS Carry Optic. It is a robust and compact miniature red dot featuring an enclosed emitter. The housing features a side-loading battery as well as a built-in rear iron sight, something that is important to me, especially for this specific gun, which I will speak about here in a minute. Okay, with the specs out of the way, guys, let's get into my overall thoughts about this gun. Guys, I really like this offering from Bull Armory. Um, it's honestly one of my favorites and for a couple of reasons. The first reason is something that Landon brought up while we were out on the range. Um, this is a compact gun and most of us don't shoot compact guns as good as we shoot full-size guns. Um, that's not the case with the UL Comp. When you put this gun in your hand, it feels like a compact gun. However, when you shoot it, it feels like you are shooting a full-size gun due to the very little recoil and how easy it is to shoot. I also like that the magazines are compatible with the full-size Bull Armory TAC 4.25 inch comp that we previously reviewed. Um, I appreciate when manufacturers utilize the same magazines. That way you're able to get more range time in versus having to load mags over and over and over again. The next thing guys is the weight. Um, this is a very lightweight gun. Again, you would think that being on the lighter side would make it more of a difficult gun to shoot. However, again, that was not the case at all. Additionally, with the gun being so light, it's very comfortable to carry concealed. Um, having a gun that is both easy to conceal and comfortable to carry encourages most people to always bring their gun with them. Being in the holster business, I've definitely come to notice that customers will often not carry their firearm if it is inconvenient or uncomfortable. For those curious about the holster that we were using in this video, this is the QBO Tactical Wingman Appendix Rig. Um, it was done up in our custom fabric overlay, which is the uh, modern Tiger Stripe with a pink Kydex overlay. The holster features multiple points of adjustable retention, uh, as well as a placement for a spare magazine, which also has adjustable retention. The holster is bent and contoured to your waistline, that way it makes it very easy to conceal in the appendix position. Guys, last thing I really liked about the UL Comp is that every grain of 9mm ammunition almost felt identical. Like I said earlier, I typically find that with compensated firearms, 147 grain 9mm typically shoots the softest for me. With the UL Comp, it was a little difficult to tell the difference and felt recoil. I mean, in my opinion, I didn't, I didn't really much feel much of a difference in any of them. They all kind of felt the same to me. Now, I know some of you guys are watching this at home and thinking, okay, cool, it's just a great gun and everything about this gun is great, it shoots well, it's comfortable to carry, it has a nice trigger, etc., etc. Yes, guys, all of those things are true. However, there are some things that I would change about the platform if I could. Um, the first for me is the optic system. There is a good amount of real estate on the back end of that slide, in my opinion, and I wish that Bull Armory would develop some type of optic system similar to either the Dawson Precision Plates or what Springfield recently did with the Echelon Firearm, making the gun compatible with several different optic on the market uh, with a direct uh, attachment method. I mentioned earlier about how the built-in backup iron sights on the Holosun EPS carry were very important with this particular firearm. Um, that's because when you install this optic on your gun, you no longer have a rear sight. I am somebody who likes redundancies and I prefer to have backup iron sights because things can go wrong. Um, in the future, I hope that Bull Armory incorporates some type of plating system with a built-in backup iron sight. Um, guys, please understand though, this is just my preference. Um, the flip side to this is that some people might like having the optic with a built-in backup sight because it makes the iron sights have a little to no obstruction in regards to the field of view within your optic window. So again, it's just personal preference. Um, the next thing I would change would be the grip module. Um, it is comfortable in the hand, however, However, I do wish that it was a little more aggressive. Uh, with sweaty hands out in the desert, the gun can definitely slide around a little bit due to the mild texture of the grip. The last thing for me is the length of the grip. I do wish it was just a little bit longer or maybe had a magwell. Um, this would give it the perfect length for my hand. You guys might remember from my Staccato CS video that I had the same issue there and I created an extended mainspring housing so that I could get a longer grip. The UL Comp is not as short as a Staccato CS in my hand. However, I would definitely like to see a little bit longer of a grip module or a magwell. Now guys, are these deal breakers for me? Definitely not. Uh, this gun is shot extremely well on the range for all of us. Uh, we all have different skill levels when it comes to shooting firearms. However, we all shot this gun extremely well across the board. Don't get me wrong, I understand guys, it's the Indian and not the Arrow. However, in this case, the gun does a lot of the work for you, especially that compensator. 
Now, I know a lot of you right now are gonna be asking me which is better, this or the Staccato CS. Guys, as I always tell you, that's gonna be dependent on you, the individual shooter. Both guns weigh in at 1.4 pounds and both guns are about the same dimensionally. I will say that the Staccato CS grip module is a little thinner coming in at 1.2 inches versus the 1.3 inches on the UL Comp. Me personally, I do prefer a thinner grip. However, it is very slight between the two. I also prefer the optic mounting system on the Staccato CS over the Bull Armory. With all that said though, I do prefer compensated or ported guns that come that way from the factory. The UL Comp comes in this configuration directly from Bull Armory. You would have to send in your Staccato CS out to a third-party company for porting, which would then void your warranty. Additionally, there are no threaded barrels available for the CS model yet, so you would not be able just to thread on a compensator. The last thing to cover is obviously the cost. The Bull Armory UL Comp has an MSRP of $1,890, so $1,890. That's about $600 less than the Staccato CS. So now take all those factors into consideration, and from there, you can make a well-informed decision on which gun is a better fit for you. Being completely honest, you're gonna be good to go either way. However, going the route of the UL Comp is definitely gonna give you a little bit of extra money for your optic and your weapon light, and it's already compensated from the factory. One last thing before we end the video, guys, because I know some of you guys are gonna ask. Um, we ran a little over 500 rounds through this gun, I think around 550 when we counted up the boxes, and the only malfunctions that we experienced were shooter-induced. Um, when utilizing the larger mags for the TAC 4.25 inch, we noticed that you really had to give it some force to make sure um, a fully loaded mag would seat in the gun if a round was already chambered. Pretty typical among some guns with the spring tension. Uh, a couple of times, Gabe did not ensure his magazine was fully seated and experienced a failure to feed. So that was on us, it wasn't the gun. But other than that guys, the gun ran flawlessly. All right guys and girls, that's gonna wrap up this review on the Bull Armory Ultralight 3.25 inch comp. A big shout out to Ben and all of the Bull Armory team because we appreciate their support with our channel and we are pumped to see all these guns coming to market. Guys, if you liked the video, definitely give us a thumbs up down below because it does help out the channel. Also, be sure to subscribe if you are new here because we post new videos every week. We appreciate you checking out this video and as always, we'll see you in the next one.